Later today, we will hear from the President the Governor's agenda for the remaining of this parliamentary term. This speech has been drafted for her by the Governor. No doubt the speech will make a positive case for the Governor's agenda for the next 20 month, four months or so. But I think it is worthwhile at this juncture for Singaporeans to look back at this Government's performance since the parliamentary term started in January 2016 because it is a good indication of how the government is going to perform going ahead. 2017 will surely go down in Singapore's history as a year of epic political failures by this government both on the domestic and international front. For the last six decades, Singaporeans believed in the promise of the PAP government that if we were willing to be docile and obedient citizens the PAP will deliver to us the good life. But what do we find after 60 years of trusting the PAP? That the PAP have betrayed our trust. Let's take a look back together at some of the betrayals which Singaporeans have experienced since January 2016. The first was the ridiculous water hike they imposed. They told the people that they needed to increase the price of water by 30%. This was nothing less than a tax on life. But barely six months earlier, on the eve of the last general election, the former Environment Minister, Mr. Vivian Balakrishna, told Singaporeans that there was no need for an increase to the water price. But six months later, they changed course. They refused to give Singaporeans costing details to justify the 30% increase. This figure of 30% appeared to have been plucked out of thin air. Various ministers came up with all sorts of reasons to justify it all of which completely fell flat. The Prime Minister himself ended up saying that the ministers could have done a better job explaining the price increase to Singaporeans. That is what you get when you can't tell a straight story. Next, let's move on to what was a demeaning saga for Singapore as a whole. The Prime Minister's own family squabbles resulted in his siblings, accusing him of the abuse of power, involving the family home at 38 Oxley Road. We had to put up with our parliament being used as a forum for a family adjudication, a total abuse of a state institution. The incident embarrassed our country the whole world over as it played out in the international press for weeks. Then we had the elected presidency, or what has become known as the walkover presidency. Under the guise of wanting a minority president, this PAP government tinkered yet again with our constitution so that only a Malay could be elected to the highest office of our land. It did this to snuffle out the near certainty of Dr. Tan Cheng Bok being elected president. He was a clearly a candidate not acceptable to the PAP. Instead, we were lumped with three candidates who, in most people's eyes, were not ethnically Malay. The ensuing social media uproar was testimony to this. Eventually, Singaporeans were saddled with a person as president who had totally no experience of running a major corporation or entity with a valuation of $500 million, which the PAP themselves had changed the constitution to require of ordinary candidates. And to rub salt into the wood, a so-called committee denied Singaporeans their right to vote and declared a walkover. My fellow Singaporeans, I do not consider that to be an elected presidency. I consider what happened to be an appointed presidency. Singaporeans were again short, short change of their democratic right to vote for the best person to be their head of state. We must also not forget one of the biggest news stories of 2017, the incessant breakdown of our MRT trains, which caused grave inconvenience to a large segment of our population who rely on this method of transportation, as well as hundreds of millions of dollars in lost productivity. Worse still, we have had deaths and serious injuries. This failure of the MRT has been going on for about a decade now, and it is clear to Singaporeans by now that the major problems are manifold. One, a rapid increase of our population due to immigration, an increase which puts incredible strain on the system that was never designed to handle such a large number of commuters. And we hear that there are millions of more people to come as the PAP marches us towards a 7 million population, if not more. Two, it was also clear to Singaporeans that a large part of the malfunction of the MRT was due to incompetent management which had accumulated over the years. 
the appointment of top management with utterly no experience in the industry. We saw history repeat itself very recently with the appointment of yet another Army General to head our MRT, as so many of you have rightfully put in your social media comments and posts, quoting Einstein, insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. And last but not least, the cutbacks by previous management on the maintenance of the MRT system so that the private company SMRT can make more profits is just scandalous. Our sovereign wealth fund, Tamasic, is a major shareholder of SMRT. It allowed an essential public utility to be compromised for profit and exhibited total disregard for the welfare of, of Singaporeans. You know that I have repeatedly called upon this president to do her duty and convene a commission of inquiry on the failings of our MRT system. But to this very day, she has refused to do so. And what is possibly the biggest scandal of them all, for the last 35 years at least, we have heard the PAP starting with Lee Kuan Yew tell us that our HDB asset will always appreciate in value, exhorting us not to sell our HDB asset. And all of you will remember the times when Lee Kuan Yew and his colleagues threatened that if an estate voted for the opposition, they will come in last in line for upgrading after those which had voted for the PAP. Lee Kuan Yew and the PAP helped Singaporeans to ransom. And then what happened last year? You had Lawrence Wong do a walk fast and finally admit to the truth that the HDB asset is a depreciating one and that after 99 years, that so-called asset has zero value and the land will be returned to the government. For most Singaporeans, their life savings are tied up in that HDB asset. And the reason why a great many elderly Singaporeans are suffering today is because what remains of their CPF savings, which has not been used towards buying that very expensive HDB flat, is simply not enough to survive on in the world's most expensive country for five years running. Worse still, many HDB owners are now unable to sell their apartments, which they need to in order to survive in retirement. The PAP government has provided no solution to this problem, which is a ticking time bomb. Most cultures encourage us to leave something for the future generation. But we have a government which enacts policies so that our people leave something to them. I expect you are not going to hear the President provide solutions to this problem in her speech, and probably not even address this dire situation at all. And what did we hear more recently? Heng Sui Kiat's announcement of a 2% rise in GST. This was completely in line with what he said in the 2017 budget, that moving ahead, the government will have to find new ways to tax in order to raise revenue. In Parliament, they wanted an opposition member to retract the statement that the government had floated a trial balloon to test public reaction on the proposed GST hike. I cannot, in this short video, address the lengthy list of missteps this government has committed. But there is a common thread that runs through and links all of these issues. And it has to do with this government and past PAP governments favoring the rich and not caring so much for the rest. They have enacted policies which have split our country into two nations, a nation for the rich and a nation for the rest. And yet they have the audacity to say that they want to tackle inequality in the remainder of this parliamentary term. We heard this most recently from Mr. Shanmugam. And I have no doubt in the, that in the coming debate on the President's speech, we will have many MPs make nice sounding speeches in Parliament about tackling inequality as they pick up their fat paychecks for their part-time job. What each and every one of them will be saying will be mere platitudes. But this government can never be serious about inequality. And you know why? Because inequality is not just some happenstance issue that arrived uninvited on our shores. It is not, in the words of a PAP MP, a black swan event. The PAP are the architects of the inequality which causes through our country today. 60 years of policies that ultimately benefited only the few. Are we now to trust the arsonists to put out the fire? All these domestic failings have weakened our country and society significantly. 
they have led to a loss of respect for Singapore on the international stage. And that has translated into our diminished standing in the global arena. We also have a Prime Minister and a government who are totally inept in the handling of our foreign policy, which has resulted in greater danger for Singapore in our region. For decades, our foreign policy was carefully calibrated to take into account the balance between the major powers in our region and how the interplay between these powers would impact on our security and economy. Although we are small, we punched above our weight in the international arena. Foreign countries respected our approach to foreign affairs. But in recent years, our Prime Minister has made foolish and uncalled for remarks on the international stage, which have, which have endangered our security and interests. The clearest example was when nine of our armoured carriers were detained in Hong Kong, an obvious that sign that China was displeased with Lee Sen Lo's remarks over the South China Sea dispute a dispute in which there was no need for him to get Singapore involved in. Many Singaporeans and business people were alarmed by the incident over the nine carriers which were detained, as they have huge investments in China. As a result, Singapore found itself ostracized by China in the One Belt, One Road initiative. What we have seen recently is the Prime Minister and his ministers scrambling to repair this all-important economic and geopolitical relationship but they are not doing it from a position of prestige and strength. Rather, it reminds me of the foreign envoys of old, sailing to China to pay tribute to the emperor. So Singaporeans, let's not be deceived by the PAP's claim that they alone can ensure the safety of our country and keep us strong in these tumultuous times. It is a time when conflagration can break out at any time between the major powers. Instead, we have a government whose actions have led to a rapid decrease in our international prestige and respect. We do not have a government today that is qualified or capable to navigate us safely through the rough and unpredictable weather of international relationships. So much talk and space have been devoted by the mainstream media and the PAP leaders to discussing the so-called fourth generation leadership which is supposed to take, be taking over the helm shortly, or not so soon, if I may add. Judging from the chaos which is apparent in the PAP's ranks over whom their next leader should be, Singaporeans should not waste any more time over this issue, because it is apparent that none of them are up to the task. They are so-called fourth-generation leaders, a phrase calculated to portray youth, vigour and freshness of ideas yet they bring to mind the words of this rally. You behold a range of exhausted volcanoes, not a flame flickers on a single pallet crest. The so-called frontrunners amongst the fourth generation leaders to become the next prime minister were also responsible for the most insipid report which emanated from the so-called Committee for Future Economies. They kept everyone in suspense for over a year in the anticipation that their report was going to be a thorough blueprint for our economy going forward in this knowledge era. Instead, their report was nothing more than a rehash of old ideas, some of which stretched back 20 years or more. It was rubbish by one of their own ex-MPs who said, and I quote, when the report came out, it was just many old initiatives being rehashed. So it was all about things being tried and tested, but with some fine tuning. Nothing new came out of it, which was the biggest problem. My fellow Singaporeans, in the coming 30 months, we will be faced with the clearest political choice in half a century, between electing a government which treats its own citizens as mere economic digits, whose roles are confined to contributing to and enriching the state, which is a PAP model, or a government which believes in the uniqueness of every Singaporean. We can choose whether to have a government that exists to serve the people or a government which enslaves its citizens. I suggest that it is in our interest to choose a government which cares in a real and meaningful way for its citizens, whether young or old. A government which will protect the property and wealth of its citizens and expand opportunities for each and every Singaporean. A government which respects the sanctity of every person's right to their CPF savings, 
and ensure a dignified life in retirement and old age, where elderly citizens do not have to continue working at menial jobs, such as cleaning toilets or cleaning tables, when they are in their 60s, 70s and 80s. A government which will not prevent our youth from developing their full potential or pursuing tertiary education because of some government quota allowing only 30% of our students to go on to obtain a university degree. A government which will see to it that our youth have good and decent jobs to look forward to when they graduate and not have to rely on driving grab to make a living. Where our PMETs are not laid off because the employer can hire a cheaper foreign. A government which is transparent and accountable to its citizens on how their tax dollars are being spent. My fellow Singaporeans, it is time for us to put the care back into government and not have the PAP pull the wool over our eyes anymore. Singapore needs a government that shows responsibility to Singaporeans and will build a true community for all our citizens. A government that cares for its people will use this president's speech to account to Singaporeans for what it has done thus far. A government that cares will be open and honest in its assessments of its own performance and not turn this occasion into another spin. You listen to the President's speech tonight and you ask yourself, where is that genuine care?